What's up guys, thanks for coming to Game in Canada with me. This week in homebrew consists mostly of Nintendo 3DS news, so I threw in a little bit of CMU as well as Switch news to make up for the lack of Wii U stories. There is still some pretty cool stuff that happened on the Wii U, so stay tuned. And if you've got an R4i SDHC flash car laying around, you're definitely going to want to watch this video. First up for the 3DS news, we're over on Nintendo Enthusiasts where there's a story about scheduled two days of maintenance for the Nintendo 3DS's network. Now you can see Nintendo has scheduled a few operations for network maintenance on the 3DS servers for the next two nights. All this maintenance will involve rendering some network services unavailable. This most likely means that accessing the eShop as well as online multiplayer. So they speculate that you won't be able to go on the eShop or online multiplayer during these times of maintenance. Now there isn't too much to worry about, it's only a few hours of maintenance on Sunday and Monday and they're fairly late at night so don't worry too much about it. The only thing that I'm slightly worried about is Nintendo might use this opportunity to drop a little bit of a ban wave and you know seemingly take a bunch of us out during these maintenance hours so to speak. I was doing air quotes there since you can't see me. All in all don't worry too much about it. It'll be Tuesday before we know it and hopefully nobody will be banned or anything weird like that. To touch on that a little bit more, here's release 3.2 from Dem Eveler for the AK2i NTR card hacks flasher. So you guys can go ahead and read over this here because it now has the R4i SDHC support, obviously. So you guys can read these guides here. This will take you to the 3ds.guide. Guide for using the single system, guide for using a Nintendo DS as well as a DSi. Please note that after you flash NTR boot firm, you will lose the flash cart feature in a lot of situations, especially if you're using a DSi. See, if you read here, if you have a Nintendo DS or a Nintendo DS Lite, use the DS mode, and this version supports restoring flash cart until shutdown of your console. Just a quick note for the R4i SDHC that was just added, it says it cannot support the restore feature currently as the Nintendo DS has a memory limit, so I guess the Nintendo DS can't hold a backup of the firmware for the cart during the time that the cart is removed and is using NTR boot hacks. That is just something to note. I don't have all the information on this. This flashcard stuff is pretty new to me, guys, but go ahead and click the link in the description. Head over to the 3ds.guide and you guys will get all up to speed on how to use your flashcards. Also, I can't be 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure you're going to need at least a Nintendo DS or a Nintendo DS Lite to be able to flash a lot of these cards. I think the new R4i SDHC included. I believe that the R4i Gold 3DS RTS is the only cart that works on all firmwares at the moment. I'm not 100% sure on that. Go to the 3DS.guide, learn all about it. While we're on the topic of custom firmware, this is a custom firmware that maybe none of you guys have ever heard of and it's called Cakes Firmware. So as you can see here, Cakes FW has a new release that just came out about 13 hours ago. And as you can see here, the creator basically has abandoned the project. As you can see, after a lot of considerations, I am finally formally dropping this project with a few words of regret for not being able to accomplish what I promised. As a goodbye, I'm pushing out one final version. This will hopefully last until the 3DS's end of life. The list of changes would be really long and I don't remember exactly the entirety of them, so here's a gist of it. It works with the latest native firmware version, 11.4. Now don't get confused, this isn't the latest firmware version, just the latest native firm. It hasn't been updated since 11.4. It also works with Boot 9 Strap 1.3 in case you wanted to try it out. There's a new .cake format supporting fancy things such as 3DS Injector. Current implementation only patches region free. There's a few other random things here if you want to read about this. If you guys want me to make a video on this, go down to the comments and type Cakes FW for the win. Up next is a post by Michael Sires over on Twitter, and you can see here, if anyone wants to try to exploit it, I don't. Pokemon XY or Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire can be used as primary exploit games. Direct message me for details if you're skilled enough. So basically, if he thinks you're skilled enough, he will release some information to you that will allow you to exploit Pokemon XY, OR, or AS as a primary exploit for getting homebrew. Now, as you can see here, Someone wrote, time to light the bat, Mr. MBA Yo signal, and Mr. MBA Yo says, no thanks. 
So this does not mean that there are any homebrew exploits within these games currently, but there is the potential that someone could exploit them to allow us to gain arbitrary code execution. That's a big fancy word that I saw on YouTube. Up next is a quick update to God Mode 9 version 1.4.3, and as you can see it's vastly improved the GBA Virtual Console save injection method and will now work 100% of the time. There isn't a ton of other stuff that the end user would find useful, but if you happen to be building this you can disable the slider so you can't use your volume as the brightness slider anymore, which honestly I almost kind of want because my thing boots up and it's all dark and then I turn the volume slider up. And then when I boot into a game, I'm on full blast volume. It's freaking ridiculous. Go ahead and update to the latest God Mode 9 if you're feeling like it. Up next is a release over on GBA Temp called CTR LED Brary. And as you can see, it's a C++ library to control the LEDs on your 3DS. What it can do is generate different types of color patterns, including constant, linear, and sinusoidal. It can set pattern and loop delay, as well as smoothing values. It can play and stop the generated color patterns with the notification LED. So at the moment, I guess it only supports the front LEDs as you can see here in this quick little video. The blue light kind of comes on, turns bright, and then disappears, and then it comes back on again. I don't know, I guess it's doing some sort of little pattern. So yeah, go ahead and check that video out if you want. I'll put a link to this thread, obviously, in the description. Up next is a release called Discord 3DS Client. Now, unlike the previous 3 Discord, this one will not get you banned. So go ahead and use this if you're interested in checking out Discord on your Nintendo 3DS. Currently, it can send messages, read messages, and change channels. It only works on servers, and you cannot send private messages with it. If you guys want it, go ahead and head one of these GitHub links and download it, or you can scan this QR code with FBI in case you wanted to install the CIA. This is a quick screenshot of what it looks like. Pretty simple, but it seems to work. So go check that out in case you're missing 3 Discord. Up next is a program called Checkpoint that I actually featured the other day. Checkpoint is a save manager that's hoping to replace JKSM with a smoother UI and a little bit simpler function. If you guys didn't see that video, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description in case you wanted to check it out. Now the reason I'm mentioning this is actually because of a previous update that I didn't even mention in the video. So basically version 2.0.0, which was a previous version, added DS cartridge support. So if you guys happen to have Nintendo DS cartridges and you wanted to rip the saves from them to maybe use in TW Loader or maybe on an emulator on the computer, then you can now use Checkpoint and you can ditch TWL save tool. Up next is a quick video called Hedge Physics running on a new 3DS. So basically Hedge Physics is a 3D Sonic engine made with Unity, so I was able to port it to the new 3DS. It runs well, says Alerty. So if you guys want to check this video out, I'll put a link in the description. I'll just play it real quick here for a second so you can see. There's Sonic. Pretty cool stuff. Make sure you head over here and give Alerty a thumbs up. I hope to see some cool stuff come out of this hedge physics engine. Last three things are posts over on the 3DS Hacks subreddit, so I'm just going to run over them real quick. This is MLSSE, Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga Save Editor. So if you happen to have the new release of Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, then you can go ahead and edit your save with this little release here. Also over on this next release is a Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga remake which allows you to use the original GBA soundtrack in the new game. So a lot of people are disappointed with the audio that comes in the new game and they want to restore the GBA soundtrack so you can go ahead and do that now. I think that is pretty awesome. Last up is a Fire Emblem Awakening Web Save Editor. Now this is a work in progress but you can already safely duplicate, delete, and share units anonymously online. Now, I don't play Fire Emblem, so I don't know too much about this, but this might interest you guys. Go ahead and check it out. Wow, okay. That was an absolute ton of 3DS news. Thank you guys for sticking through all that. Let's move on to the Wii U stuff. I have one legit Wii U story, and then the rest are kind of CMU and Wii U related, I guess. There's one that's really funny, so make sure you stay tuned to the end to see it. Up first is a release called the Ultimate Virtual Console Injector for the Wii U. Now this is legitimately ultimate. As you can see, it supports Wii Virtual Console injections, Nintendo DS, SNES, NES, as well as N64. 
Huge shout out to Nico. This is absolutely crazy. It currently does not do GBA Virtual Console injection because it does not quite work. Once that gets fixed, it will also include that. Just a quick note, games that use Super FX chips like Star Fox or maybe Super Mario RPG or Kirby's Canvas Course, I think are a few off the top of my head that might use a special chip. They will not work with this injection method and neither will DSi enhanced games like Pokemon Black or White. Now I know you guys want me to make a video about this and don't worry, I'm going to eventually get to it, but please go down to the comments and write Ultimate Virtual Console Injector video just to give me a little bit of motivation to get it out there. I'm also going to be bringing you guys the GameCube injection script so don't worry about that we will soon get to it and you guys will have all this stuff running on your Wii U in no time. Up next is a post on the CMU subreddit and it says the next CMU release will support native online play. So basically if you dump your OTP and your CPROM from your Wii U, you're going to be able to play on the actual Nintendo Wii U servers using CMU. So there's a video here that you can go ahead and check out and it's actually showing someone playing on Nintendo's official Wii U servers from their PC. Now that is absolutely epic and in the future this might be a legitimate thing to do. As you can see, only Splatoon, Smash, and Mario Kart 8 are confirmed to work so far, but that is absolutely wild and is really, really cool. Up next is a release for CMU users that use a Steam controller. Now this allows you to add gyro controls like you would have on the Wii U gamepad for playing stuff like Zelda on CMU. So if you are missing out on gyro controls to complete some of the shrines in Breath of the Wild and you happen to use a Steam controller, you might want to check this out. Up next, we're over on Yam Gaming's YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to Yam, go ahead and subscribe. Awesome YouTube channel and one of my favorites. This is a video called Zelda Breath of the Wild looking so good and it's a graphic pack comparison between the new clarity pack and basically the old graphics for Zelda. As you can see here on the left, the clarity pack removes a lot of that foggy look that is kind of apparent on the Wii U and the Switch version. I've actually had friends that mentioned this fogginess and how the game doesn't look that good because of it. And I can honestly say the clarity pack looks amazing. If you guys want to check out this video, make sure you head over there, give Yam a thumbs up, and subscribe. Up next, we're over on William Zilv's page. Sorry if I just butchered your name, but basically, this is a mod for Breath of the Wild that they have been making, and they are recreating Zelda from scratch so that we can play as her within the game. And this is a work in progress, but as you can see, they're making a fair amount of headway. Last up is an absolutely insane mod. Again, we're on William Zilv's page, and as you can see, they have replaced Link with the initial D Corolla, the AE86, and the results are absolutely fantastic. Just just watch. So that is just absolutely hilarious. You guys got to go watch this video with the sound on. It had me busting. I was dying. This is too funny, okay? That was the end of the Wii U news. Make sure you guys slam that like. Give me a little bit of a comment down below. Anything in the video you guys want to see me make a video about, please let me know. Hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get up to 10,000 subscribers. If we hit 10K before Christmas, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I'm not going to tell you guys what it is, but if you followed me over on Twitter, you might have a little bit of info about it. So go follow me on Twitter. And I'm going to leave you guys with this last post by Michael Sires again. Awesome work by the Reswitch team today dumping the Tegra 210 boot ROM. So what does that mean? The Switch's boot ROM got dumped? Huh?